All right. Welcome to the Madison podcast. My name is Ben Lavender, New York's favorite British mortgage broker. Today is a beautiful Monday. We have Zuli here. Or the your pronunciation is Zulema. Correct. Right? That's the. Did I pronounce it correctly? You did. Excellent. Actually, okay. surprisingly, you did. Wow. I'm Which nobody does. Amazing. I get mm-hmm. some type of brownie. She did not teach me how to do it before. No. Um, so Zuli, thank you for joining us. Of Kindly course. introduce yourself to the people of America and the entire world. Tell them who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Zuli Alvarez. I'm a real estate broker in Westchester County. I work all throughout Westchester. I'm currently at Compass, and I run my own team. Cool. Yeah. So let's go straight into that. Tell us about your – because I always find, like, team structures very interesting. I have a team Mm -hmm. myself, and Mm -hmm. I find that, you know, running a team in the real estate business can be a little bit challenging, Mm -hmm. right, depending on how you structure it. So Mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit, like, how did you form the team? How Mm -hmm. is it structured? How do you manage leads? What do you help with? Um, yes, of and course. Any any like little secrets would be cool too. <laughs> you know, it's up to you. So, how do I structure my team? I I've always been. I'm not like really like a numbers person. It's more a quality kind of thing. I feel like the right people never like gravitate towards you. Mm. Um, so everybody that's on my team has just been naturally gravitating. You know, I go out and I just say, okay, like I would like this and this and this in a team member. And I feel like eventually that person comes to you. I do try to add a lot of value to everybody in my team. Like law of attraction. Be, like I'm very like, into law of attraction, yeah. manifestation, very into all that. That's a whole different topic. Oh, no, we'll get into that but, too. But um, yes, I very I feel like the right people just always gravitate towards you. Um, energetically also that kind of level, whether it be work wise or, you know, value wise or whatever it is. I do try to give all the best value to everybody around me. Also my team members, um, you know, with understandment, with everything. Um, how, how, yeah, I feel uh, like the people How many have, of you are that? We are three right now. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely growing. I am in the process of looking for somebody else. I know the market obviously is a little slower. Yeah. So it also that limit me that limits me a lot because then in regards to being able to give leads and work, yeah, it's just very you know it's a tougher situation than we were you know like seven months ago. It was a different game. Right. Very, very different, different game. So right now I'm actually in the process of hiring a virtual assistant. Oh, cool. I actually have a meeting, a virtual meeting with her right after this. I'm um, from the Philippines. Philippines yeah. Yes. Which, which company? My outdesk? I, uh, somebody from my current company actually connected me with her. So we're going to be meeting for the first, virtually for the first time today, um, which will be nice because right now, especially in the market that we're in, mm. I feel like it gives me time and clarity to be able to restructure my business yeah, um, in a, a better, right. Just because I feel like these last couple of years have been crazy busy, which you're just kind of like on just survival reacting. mode, yeah, kind of like, almost business wise. Cause you're just like, you wake up and like, holy crap, like email, blah, 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 call, blah, blah, blah. And it's like 6.30, non-stop. 7 in the morning, right? You're already doing emails, sending out this, running to meetings, running to buyer client meetings, you know, to listing presentations, to this, to this, to that. Then you get home, you know, cook dinner, do this, do this, do that. And then like the next day, it's the it same thing. Yeah. Seven days a week. It, it like doesn't give you just clarity to how to properly maybe structure your team. You're just more kind of well, on survival. I think I think that's a nice thing about the market slowing down mm-hmm. because we're taking this. Obviously, we want to keep like prospecting going off the business, but mm-hmm. it's a really good opportunity to restructure everything because – we know that it's going to bounce back eventually. Correct. It's not going to be like what it was in 2020, 2021. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that cycle will happen again eventually, but not mm-hmm. for a while, mm-hmm. right? So it's like now's a good time to reset. And basically like the way I'm looking at it is look at all the holes that I had while it was super busy. Correct. Right. So this way when it pops up again, mm-hmm. that will be filled and we won't lose business. Correct. You know, So during the pandemic, as you know, a lot of people – refinance right because Mm -hmm. rates were so low Mm -hmm. i didn't have an amazing system for capturing refinances Mm -hmm. i mean given i like to help people buy homes like it's more fulfilling for me Mm -hmm. but during the the refi boom my split was 70 percent purchases and 30 percent refis Mm -hmm. most people in the business it was like 99 percent refinances Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. given for loan officers it's what helps with longevity right when you're helping people with purchase versus refis but like now I'm seeing, okay, like I could have done this a little bit better. I could have captured more business 
Correct. here. And it's like, how do we, what systems can we put in place to fix those goals? Whether it's like hiring people or mm-hmm. virtual assistants. Speaking of which, what do you plan on having the virtual assistant do for you? So I definitely, I, I, we were talking about this earlier, just focus so much on my marketing, mm. um, just because I personally, am, I've always been that kind of person that takes everything on and just wants everything kind of my way. Um, just because I have a very clear vision as to what I like and what I don't like. What is that? What's- so just the way I market, the way I do things. Um, and now I feel like adding her on, I want to like just sit down with her and explain to her absolutely everything the way I vision it and have her do it when it comes down to like mailings. Yeah. Right. When it comes down to mailings, like following up um, just because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one person. Yeah. So I can only do so much. And I feel like it's time that I start delegating in that aspect so I can focus on other things that I've been wanting to do for a while. And because I didn't have the time and I didn't really know how to delegate properly, yeah, I wasn't doing so. Um, and focus on the things that I actually really want to do Which and not so much. I'm actually in the process of wanting to start, well, starting my own podcast. Oh, cool. Growing my team um, and focus a lot on like the social media yeah. marketing, but like in a different way. Um, How so? So I have a videographer that comes in from the city, which we've done a couple videos already. I have a lot of marketing ideas. Um, I don't know. I'm very like good at thinking about i don't know like you, have, you have like creative ideas <laughs> I've, i have very creative ideas and okay. just so you know I, putting I plan some... on stealing them from you so awesome yeah. you do that <laughs> <laughs> so right so you know th- things like that that i've just been wanting to do and it's just bringing them to fruition just setting the time apart and just bringing it to fruition and also having the right people you know structuring a team and that aspect also it's hard yeah. um of finding a let's say a videographer that also you know uh, like gravitates to you and just understands like, I know, I your idea you and kind of like lets you run with the, it. Yeah. And one that can like, can read you as well. Correct. You know, so that's key. So like Tyler and I, it took us a while to develop it, right? Cause mm-hmm. you have to get to know each other. Mm-hmm. But like if my energy is off or it's right. like, I'm not saying something clearly, like he'll tell me it's like redo that, but like, you know, put a little pep in it or something right. or like, right. you know, so you, you, and then you bounce off each other and then it's like you're talking and you get ideas. So it will happen. Like Tyler and I will just be sitting mm-hmm. doing the podcast and mid conversation. I'm just like, okay, I got it. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it's like, it inspires you you you're like your brain gets going right and right it's like it's it's honestly it's probably like my funnest day of the week it's right. very tiring it's right. tiring to shoot for an hour two hours sometimes we shoot for just like black you know blast out i don't know eight to 20 videos depending yeah. on the day it's exhausting but it's fun it's the fun part of the business right. you know and right. i feel like a lot of people not you for sure but a lot of people view it as like this really hard like chore that you have to do right. and it sucks and it's cringy right. it's definitely a little bit cringy right but after a while you get over it when you realize like people aren't that focused on you you know right. they're, they're worried right. about their own lives right right and they're not looking for perfection no right and i feel like that's something personally that i struggled with prior it's just accepting that oh it doesn't have to be perfect yeah. It's just being you, whatever that is, right? And well, the right let me people. Ask you this: Do mm-hmm. you feel like projecting perfection is kind of a deterrent for people to reach out to you? Yes, a hundred percent. I feel like it just it makes people feel almost even self conscious in a way. Yeah, to a certain extent. And the reality is that nobody's perfect. I mean, nobody has together. No, you know, it, it's just like maybe from the outside it looks like, oh yeah, like she has it all. She's young. She has a business. Like she has a house. Blah, blah, blah. But then another compar- like another parts of your life, you just you know, you're also not all there. No, it's not. You're it's learning not and you're growing, right? And you're learning and you're growing and just taking things just as experiences, whether they be good or bad, but just learn from everything. Yes. And I feel like changing your perspective to that, saying, okay, like this didn't work out. Whatever it could be, right? It could be business wise or relationship wise or friendship wise or anything in life, um, marketing wise, whatever. And just take it as, okay, well, this didn't work out. Why didn't it work out? What part did I play in this? And also just becoming better and learning your lesson and just making sure it doesn't happen again. It's it's a quality that I see in most top producers is mm-hmm. the 
the wanting to continuously improve. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's not easy to do because you have to be objective with yourself. Correct. And say, it's funny because we had a team meeting literally an hour ago and this is exactly what I talked about. Like you have to be able to look at yourself, like I said, objectively, but it's not easy to do because it requires you to like push your ego to the side. Correct. No one wants to say, oh, I'm weak here. Mm -hmm. I can improve here. It's just because also like I feel like in our business, we have to balance consistently like having a bit of an ego, right, and having confidence so we can get things done, be Mm -hmm. productive, be efficient. But then you got to hit the other side of the spectrum and be like, where where do I suck? Correct. Because those areas, so for instance, take like marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you suck at marketing, but that's like one of the major tools that you can use to grow your business, like you need to attack it. Right. You need to attack and it. And just say, you know what? Yes, like I'm not giving the value I should in this aspect. Yeah. And what is it that I need to do to be able to provide that value and do just whatever it is that you need to do? Does that and it's come that from simple? Something? Do you attribute it to like maybe the way you were raised or a discipline that you had when you were younger? I just think personally, the way I was raised, I mean, I was re- I was raised in a very, very conservative and traditional Mexican household. Um so the way I was raised and mentality I was raised with, opposed to mentality I have now, mm. are two very different things. So, but I feel like a lot of that conservativeness and um, a lot of that structure has stuck with me. So I kind of took the best out of that and just kind of twisted and made it my own. So when you say conservative, (laughs) were you uh religious? Very religious. I mean, I went, you know, to Catholic school my whole life. I went to Catholic university. Um, Yeah, very religious. Is it still a big part of your life now? Yes. Yes, I'm still, uh, yes, very big part of my life, but I'm not like that person that's at church, you know, every Sunday either. Gotcha. Um, Kind of in my own way, I'd like to to say. Yeah, very important. I, I mean, I believe to everyone it's their own way. Like no right. matter how, you know, um, how hard you practice, right? Right. There's always a, another level, correct? Right. So, like for instance, I have um, Orthodox family. So I'm Jewish. I'm 100 mm-hmm. Jewish, and I have Orthodox family that live in Israel that have, you know, they're Orthodox. They're, mm-hmm. very, you know, it's it's their life, and they study the Torah, and they're very into it, and mm-hmm. they're just. Every time I see them, I love them because they're one, they're amazing to hang out with. They're the mm-hmm. best, but they're not judgmental of all mm-hmm. at, at all, right? Mm-hmm. They're just very like traditional. And meanwhile, like I'll come across other people that are like not religious whatsoever compared right. to them and are super judgy. Right. Like, Ben, right. you don't do this, you don't do that. And just right. like, you know, it's like, are you here to judge me? Or, right. or is it? Or, right. Like, right. What, what are we doing here? Yeah. People are just, uh, people are people are people at the end yeah. of the day. So do you feel like that spirituality or religion like plays a part in like how you approach, I wouldn't just say life. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't just say the business, but life in general. And yes. Like it carries over. So that that's like 100%. your your base of like how you do everything else. Yes. Everything in my life, I base it off. I try to do the best, not just in business, but just everything in my life. I try to approach everything the most in the most genuine, non-egotistical way. Yeah. Um. But that also helps you. I'm very big into like karma and law of attraction and just that helps you. That does. How did you get into that? My friend. One of my friends is probably going to watch this, Linda. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks, Linda. (laughs) Thank you, Linda. Um, Yeah, she was very like into it. And at the beginning, she would tell me and I was like, you sound like a hippy dippy stuff. Like, stop. (laughs) And then it's true, though. I mean, how you believe in it is is different. Like, I don't believe in karma in the sense that what goes around comes around like there's right. a magical force that well if someone does you wrong right and magically they'll get what happens to them i right. think what happens is is that you push and you push and you push and you test and then eventually your poor behavior does right. you know it works against you and right. then you learn and then you adjust correct right but it's correct. like but that's to me that's how it works it comes full circle that's energy right and correct. then it's it's the same thing with positive energy if you're putting a lot of like what you said before, like you, it doesn't just go into your business, it goes into every aspect of your life. Right. You have to practice throughout everything in your life, whether that be your business relationships, you know, deals itself, um, your friendships, 
you know, your also your home, the way you live your home life, the way you structure your own life and live your own life and treat yourself as well. Um, I feel it goes into all that goes into play. Because it's it's funny before because you were saying like, you know, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect, but it does sound like you got it all figured out. No, I know? don't. <laughs> I like, do not yeah. at all. I'm a learn. It's definitely a learning progress for everything. I mean, there's just things that I, I don't know. I just learn, and you're human, and sometimes you have to sit back and take a break and say, okay, like I made a mistake, and why I make it, and just learn. What would you say is one of your biggest attributes or skills that helps you grow in the business the way i approach people okay they feel comfortable and i'm re- like i'm relatable yeah. i'm not like a snoozy like stuck up kind of oh no 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 don't talk to me you know i'm like yeah tell me like oh yeah. you know you're having barbecue on sunday sure i'll come like you're, you're, if i can um yeah you put like, effort you put effort in yes like, and i could say even because i mean we've spoken on the phone but even right. like over the phone i could sense your energy right right like very welcoming like pleasant to speak to right you know which is it which is the way it should be it's also like it's a happier way to be right I think you're more efficient if you're not so like heavy and like what do you want like it's just like just, there's just, just no nice. need for that right yeah. i just feel like if you're going to interact with people and just why not give them something good it just makes people feel better and yeah. it makes you feel M- better most too people. right most and people. it just made even people that are rude i'm I'm big on like kill them with kindness kind of Agreed. just it's like why there's no need or there's no point of getting to their level like for what I, that's just not who you are that's not gonna make you, you happy right just even with deals i mean with other agents you know how sometimes it's so aggressive and just yeah. everybody's so aggressive and so tight and i just there's no need to match that i feel like there you don't need to be rude and be condescending to be a top producing agent you really don't you can just treat everybody with respect across the board treat them the way that you want to be treated and work your ass off that's literally all you have to do work your ass off you know be dedicated and treat people nicely um and i feel like just everybody around you feels that and gets that and they gravitate towards you and i mean i work the way i work with people the way i treat people that's what i was telling your this gentleman over here mr tyler mr tyler ravon um at this point in my life i've built an 100 percent referral base you know, business. Which I wanted to ask you about. So how did you get started when it came to building your business? Like getting your first, let's say, five to 10 transactions? How did I get started? Um, And when did you get started, by the way? Oh, it was hard. I mean, I got into real estate not knowing absolutely anything, honestly. I got into real estate not knowing nobody, nothing. I didn't know one single person in real estate. Oh, wow. Um, no, it was hard. Yeah. It was, but I was just... Wait, so if you didn't... So how did you get into the business then? So let's go back. So I worked... Yeah. Okay, so I worked um, with this woman that worked for the UN, and I was basically her personal assistant. Okay. I was in college. I did radio... Bro- I was actually doing radio broadcasting at a Spanish radio station um, in the city, and I liked it, but I didn't love it. Mm. Like, I didn't feel like that kind of, like, passion, like, yeah, I want to grow this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I was, I could have done that forever, to be honest. I was very well set there. I was already interning at this huge, like, radio station. Um, and I could have just stayed there and been comfortable. But I just felt like that didn't feel right mm. forever. It was, like, fun for them, but didn't feel like that would be my purpose in life, gotcha. let's say. Um, then I started working with this UN rep, her mother-in-law. I met her once. And she was from California originally. She had just retired and she was this huge top producing broker in California. Hmm. And she was the first person ever that said, you know what, you should get into real estate. And I had never, ever even thought about real estate, nothing. She's like, you have the perfect personality. She's like, you have the drive. She's like, you have the willingness, you're teachable, blah, blah, blah. Do it. And I just kind of I didn't do it it kind of lingered in the back of my you know mind um and I left it lingering and then later on I had one of my cousins come up from Florida with her husband and we went out to dinner in the city and we were just chit-chatting and he also told me you know why don't you get into real estate you Mm -hmm. would be so good at it and I was like you know what you're the second person that tells me this after that they left I took an online course and I started from there um how long ago was this I started when I was 23. I'm 30 now. Oh, cool. So you've been doing this a minute. 
yeah, for a little while now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then one of my cousins worked at a hair studio. Uh, her then boss also started, in, you know, also had just started her own little company. It was like a boutique brokerage um, named Portico Realty. And I went, I joined her. I never interviewed anywhere else. I mean, I had, I was young. I was a child. Yeah. I had no clue about anything. I didn't know nothing, <laughs> to be honest. But I knew I wanted to do it. That's all I knew. Yeah. I wanted to. I wanted to do it. And I had the willingness to do it and the drive to do it. So I started with her. That really didn't go anywhere. Um, well, so hold on. Before you go into how you got your business, mm -hmm. how did it work? Well, I know you just said it didn't go anywhere. But like, did you have some type of mentorship, guidance, anything? So it go, So so funnily enough, I the deals that I made when I was at that brokerage were all deals of random people that I would just meet. My oh. first deal at Kitchen on Real Estate was this woman that I met at a nail salon. We cool. were we were getting pedicures. We were sitting right next to each other. And she just starts telling me like, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a place, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, well, I'm a realtor. Yeah. I mean, with no experience, of course, but I was a realtor. Well, you don't have to so, say that. Right. So then, yeah, we started looking. I We looked maybe for like six months. Um, and she ended up buying a townhome in Somers, Amazing. New York. And that was my first deal ever. And I kind of just started meeting people um and just trying to put myself out there and just that's how i got my first couple of deals done so i don't know obviously because i wasn't there but my assumption based on this conversation and you know getting to know you is that like those situations only really work and things only happen that way if you put yourself out there which you huh. just said but it's not just a matter of of talking it's mm -hmm. more like an energy thing it's body language Correct. right like if you're out in public and like getting your nails done and you're just like this then no but like if 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 you're open and people feel comfortable to talk to you Correct. and you just like you have this this energy and this aura um people do come to you Correct. and it is rare. I will say this. It is very rare. Um, I think based on what you said, like your spirituality, your religion, maybe that that's what gave it to you, mm -hmm. probably the way you were raised, your life experiences. Right. Um, and I think for anyone watching this who just who, who isn't that person who doesn't have it, I think it's something that you should work on, like work on just being a happier human being. Correct. And you don't need to have your life together i think like you can you can become that person through simple things like practicing gratitude as they Correct. say like I, I i put it in quotations like that because it, it's a buzzword and it sounds corny but by by doing that like you know simple things like today the weather isn't amazing right, right? but you know honestly like i love it it's an it's a nice break from right. all the sun and, and craziness right. but it's just it's a very simple shift in mentality like you Correct. could easily be like uh it's Monday. It sucks today. Right. But no, right. it's like, you know, get a little break. We're indoors. Right. It's, it's nice. nice. It's cool. Right. Like, I don't know. Maybe later on, I'm, I have free time. It's perfect weather to watch a movie. A exactly. movie I've been wanting to watch. Whatever. Right. Right. So, but look, most right. people. It's about change. It's a, it's a mentality shift. Yeah. And I, that's what I like to tell most people. And it's then it just into everything. Correct. It's a mentality shift that goes from. Like looking at things so negatively in a way, or oh, why do I have to yeah. do this, or oh, why is it like this, or oh, blah, blah, blah. you know, just changing that chip in your head to say, okay, well, why did this happen, or why is this like this, or why do I even feel like this? Like, yeah. why is this triggering me to even feel like that? Like, there's actually nothing wrong. Why am I getting triggered? And just sitting down with yourself and just keeping it real with yourself mm -hmm. and just saying, okay, like, why do I feel like this? There's no reason for me to feel like this, or there's no reason for me to even do that, or there's no reason for me to even, even to look at something that way. And so, I feel like that's that's what it is. Getting real with yourself, sitting down with yourself, and just painting a clear picture of what it is that you want your dream person to be as yourself, right? Like who, yeah, so basically... I've, I think I've heard this before. It's like, who do you want to be? And then what are the behaviors of that person? Correct. And then start implementing those Correct. behaviors. Correct. And I feel like it's getting to that point that you say, okay, like I maybe back down and be like, I, Zuli, my dream person is to become this inde financially independent woman, you know, that blah, 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 and appreciates and is happy with her life, right? So what do I need to do? to get there like what is it that i need to implement in my life now what traits you know what values whatever it is 
that I need to do to become that person. And I feel like you start incorporating that. And that's where, you know, all this comes in of changing your mentality and changing your mindset as to, okay, well, this is more of an opportunity for growth yeah. opposed to, oh, poor me, like having a victim mentality and everything and yeah, anything. It doesn't help. Well, no. e- well, even if it's true and you actually are a victim in a situation, at least right. in business, I'm not talking about serious stuff, but like it, it doesn't help. It's not a position of power. You don't have control no. when you're the victim. You can't do anything. Right. It doesn't serve you. It just, right. it, I, I like this is going to sound harsh for me to say because I have like I have friends in my life who like play victim to everything and it's just like that's why you stay miserable that's why you keep like, in the same situation you stay because, stagnant yes, yeah even though like let's say that you've been dealt terrible cards which a lot of people have and it's definitely harder for those people mm-hmm. for sure but if you're at a disadvantage dwelling in the disadvantage isn't going to help you get out of it right Right. And I feel like going into business, you know, that helps you a lot having that mentality because then, I mean, real estate deals go south every single day. Yeah, You know, these crazy problems pop up every single day. And instead of, you know, going in with the mentality, like, oh, why me? Oh, this person's being such a biatch or this person's so hard. I, I hate dealing. A time. <laughs> That's a great word. <laughs> I hate biatch. dealing with this person. Yeah. Right. Um, or whatever it is. You know, it kind of changes your, that all helps. And that's why you can produce what you produce and still live like a happy, balanced life. Yeah. And not take things personal. And you're like, okay, well, this happened. And why did this happen? And next time I won't let that happen because now I know better. Yeah. And, now and that can be with it. a deal or that can be with a client or that can be with a listing presentation or that can be with whatever it is. So what I wanted to ask you, because you did say that you are human. I'm just double checking. You are a human being. Yes. I'm not a robot. Okay. So... <laughs> Of course, like once in a while, you must burn out. You Mm -hmm. must get a little down. Like how, doesn't have to say how often it happens, but like how do you deal with it? How do you snap yourself out of it? I, okay, I call that being in a funk. Yeah. Um, So I feel it and I'm like, okay, I'm not being my best self right now. Why am I not being my best self? And I just take some time off. Okay. Yeah. Simple. I kind of just, you know, withdraw. And I'm like, okay, like it's time that I take a step back and I focus on myself because I'm not being my best self. And that's going to show in everything that's going to show up in my business. That's going to show up in my home life, in my personal life, in my whatever life. Um, So, yeah, it's important to know when to take a step back and also important to almost understand that it's okay, You know, and that's why like this hustle culture. is very toxic yep. to a certain extent because then you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. I have to still show up. I have to still show up, which you do 100%. But show up as your best self. Right. And if you feel like you're burnt out and you're not showing up as your best self, then it's like a very clear indication of saying, okay, no, like I need to take a step back and I need to figure my shit out because I'm not going to portray my best self either with a client or showing a property or making a deal or in a listing presentation or with my team members, Mm. you know, um, or with my home life or with anything and everything. So I feel like it's that recognizing when that happens and just saying it's okay. I need to take a step back. I need to take five days off, two days off, three days off, a week off, whatever it is, but just like, just retrieve. So I had a, a follow-up question to that. Do you, do you feel like as your career has progressed, your burnout periods have become less frequent and that you've like been able to man or the, the funk periods, uh, they've become less frequent and you're, they're more manageable? I've, yes, I feel like I've learned to manage them better. Mm. It's that. I feel like I've learned to manage my emotions better and I've learned to manage my burnout periods better there's also another thing that's probably well i noticed this with myself and Mm -hmm. you've probably experienced the same things because a lot of our stresses come from situations that we don't really know how to handle correct and by being experienced like there are things that i do in 60 seconds which would take me like three days Mm -hmm. when i was in the business uh, 10 years ago on like how to do, like if I had to figure something out, I would dilly dally, it would stress me out. And it's just like, as time goes on in this business, like I always say the first like few years are 
very very difficult like they are so challenging it's tough like because like from a loan officer perspective like part of it's hard for us to get business we have to you know poach you guys for business or whoever financial planners mm-hmm. attorneys right and then like once you get it then you have to actually work the deal you mm-hmm. have to convert it it's it's a it's a sprint or rather it's a marathon that you kind of sprint at every day but as time goes on like you you could say your lactic acid threshold is higher you can take on more because you're used to dealing with it it's like right. it's like training you know training it's as an athlete thing. right it's exa- it literally is the same exact thing but that all comes through experience though yeah you won't have that if you don't have the experience and if you're resilient enough to go through the experience learn from it and, and keep learn going. from it correct and that's why it's so important to change your mindset and not just to be in real estate business i mean to be in any kind of business or for anything in life just changing that mentality from victim mentality to okay yeah why is this? Why did this? Why did this come about? Why did I attract this or call this into my life? And what am I learning from this? You know, and just implement that into my life, and that will be literally for any and everything. And I feel like that's the way that you grow in every aspect of your life. Um, and you can be young, and you can have you know a career and a business, and still have like you know like friends, and still go out for yeah. dinner like here and there, and just you can do mix whatever it, in. it is. You can right. mix friends and family right. with business, and- right? Right. And just live your best, most balanced, authentic life Mm. to whatever it is to you. You know, some people love to travel. Other people don't like to travel. Other people like to whatever it is, whatever it is that makes you happy. Just figure whatever it is that brings you joy and fulfillment and just try to balance everything else out. So what would you say your favorite thing is about the business? My uh, definitely creating relationships with people. Mm. That for me is my most favorite. Uh, just creating relationships and feeling like you actually made like a positive impact in their life. Yeah. Like, for example, me, I that's one thing that helped me a lot. I was able to determine like to really narrow down my niche of clientele. Um, and that's also why I have a 100% referral based business at this point. Mm-hmm. But it's because I do it and I do it with like all my best intentions and people can feel that. And I try to help and not just, okay, well, I sold you a house. Like, oh, cool. Like, you need an account. I have a great account. And like, let me connect you. Okay. You know, because especially in our culture, we don't come from connections. Hmm. We don't at all. We come from, you know, your parents come here and they work 20, 25, 30 years to buy a house. And yeah. then they retire. And that's all they know. You know, and that's fine. Because that's all they know. And they try to do the best for you and that's their best and just you know being appreciative of that and saying okay like they did their best so what's my best and how i how can i help all those around me not just by selling them a house but also by educating them or by connecting them or by whatever it is in whatever way i can be of service or helpful to them like if you can why not well i, I think that there's like a magic in that in and that being the thing that you enjoy the most because from a a making money perspective it probably has the highest roi Mm -hmm. right like forming relationships and then on Mm -hmm. top of it you genuinely enjoy it so it doesn't so you don't approach it with like an agenda or you know so for instance if like my favorite thing in the mortgage business was doing paperwork and looking at tax returns right I wouldn't be as good as generating business. That right. It's a skill that I know how to do. And there's, uh, what's what's the saying? The the man that enjoys the journey or whoever enjoys the journey will walk further than the person just trying to like reach the destination. Right. If you just like enjoy it, you'll do so much more. If you, for instance, like if I approached you, Zuli, with like, hey, Zuli, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah great, mm-hmm. send me business. Like it's, that doesn't work. Right. Right. It's like more like if you approach it without an agenda and you just like right. focus on the connection and seeing if it's a good fit. Right. Like, and when I say good fit, I don't just mean like in terms of business and making money. Like personality is a huge thing. Right. 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 You, is your communication style similar? Right. Right. Do you right. guys clash if we're both egotistical and like want to take the lead? Mm-hmm. It just it doesn't it won't work. Right. We'll just we'll we'll, we'll keep hitting. You bump heads. Yeah. Right. Also, I feel like it's coming from a way of how is it that I provide value? Mm. Right. Like, how is it that I would provide value to these people aside from selling them a home? It's like and if you can add value to their life, why not? Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people hold back on that. I don't understand why. But if you can help other people, do it. 
Yeah. I don't know if you can add value uh, to their life. I'd do say it. a lot of people are kind of uh, like stingy with their energy, mm. and it's like a it's because it's it is taxing to be a person of effort. That's mm. what I like to say. Mm-hmm. Like to, to put yourself out there and want to help people. Right. It requ- it requires work. Most right. people don't right. want to put in that effort, you know. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is like in our in our business, if you put effort into the right things, then right. the results come. Right. So follow up question on the opposite end of that uh, spectrum is what is your least favorite thing about the business? I think dealing with disappointments Mm. with other people's disappointments that's a little tough. Even the ones that are out of your control especially. Especially the ones that are out of your control. Just because you're like okay like I've done everything I can and sometimes things just don't pan out and it's hard for people to understand that. You know it's hard for them to say okay well something better is going to come right? Um, I feel like sometimes people just get so stuck like on this one thing, like this one property, like they must have that. And if they don't, they're never going to find anything better. And I've had clients of mine this just this past week, something similar happened, you know? And I'm like, listen, we've done absolutely everything we can to make this happen for you. And it still didn't happen. It still didn't work. Yeah, That means that there's something better out there for you and we will find it, but it's just I think dealing with that disappointment yeah, that um, sucks. of people and it's hard. That's for me personally, that's the toughest thing to manage for me. I mean, like work wise, I'm used to working seven days a week, all that stuff I have down packed, not a problem. I like working. Yeah. I don't know. It's like it's if fun. I'm not wor- right, I enjoy it. So I like it. It's not like I'm like, oh, here I go again. No, I've never felt like that. I enjoy working. It's just more like the different kind of things that come with the real estate business. And I feel personally for me, it's just more the disappointment of things that are out of your control because they happen and they happen all the time. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And you can try, you can bend yourself over backwards and you can do this, even cut your commission, do this, do this, do that. And sometimes it just doesn't work. And telling that to people- Even if you do the best job in the world, it can still happen. Like, And sometimes I feel- People have this expectation of perfection. Mm-hmm. And like when a client calls me, honestly, it's it's one of the first things that I say, like within the f- first five minutes is like, look, I can do the best job in the world. But you have to understand like real estate in New York, more specifically, it's out the state, it's not as big of an issue, but it's kind of the epitome of Murphy's law. You have so many people involved in a transaction. Yes. There's so much times like other states, the offer letter is the contract, mm-hmm. right? Like a lot of the things that go wrong are between offer accepted and contract signing Mm -hmm. you know it happens all the time like and it's just like i just tell them like look i'll do the i could do the best job in the world but Mm -hmm. you know things happen the seller could be difficult it's just you just have to understand that you'll probably frustrated be frustrated at some point and we just have to deal with it and and take it on and that that's the game yeah especially when you're dealing with so many different parties because i mean you have a buyer you have a seller you have a buyer agent you have a selling agent you have a buyer attorney you have a you know a selling attorney you have a lender in play it's just all, and then plus the families in the back you know what i mean yeah so it's just so many different parties with so many different kind of expectations and so many different personalities and so many different this and so many different that that sometimes not all parties can get on the same page and it's not realistic, you can, it's just opinion. not realistic, right? So it's like if you bend yourself over backwards and you do everything you can to save a deal, to make a deal, to whatever it is, and it still doesn't happen, it's just like you accept it and I accept it. And I'm like, okay, like I used to feel bad about it, but I'm like, you know what? No, I did everything I could, literally everything to make this happen and it still didn't work. Um, but I feel like it's more dealing with the disappointment from your client whether that be the seller or the buyer and it happens and it's just more managing that just because some things sometimes are out of your control and they don't fully understand that and yeah so i think we'll we'll wrap up with this because we are over time um do you find that because you are a high effort individual that you are welcoming do you come Mm -hmm. across people that kind of take advantage of that and like ask too much of you and and the ones that do how do you handle them yeah oh all the time um i'm really nice but i also know how to draw the line at this so point so how do you do that i just through experience i've learned 
I'm just like, okay, like I'm not that person that's like, oh, well, that's out of my pay grade. I'm not doing it. Mm. I've never been like that ever. But I feel like when somebody constantly is just becomes like a draining kind of energy and they're just calling you like if you're a therapist and you're not a therapist and it just goes beyond the realms of real estate and it goes beyond the realms of anything that you can even do. That's where I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm so sorry. I cannot help you to that with that, but I can connect you with somebody that can. Gotcha. So I feel like that's the so way I like manage a it. Rolodex of therapists, basically. It's like <laughs> right, right. I mean, everybody. I feel like at a certain extent, you are kind of a therapist in real estate. Yeah, a hundred percent. Or in the mortgage business, but, but you know. Sometimes it's a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. No, it can definitely get overwhelming. So I feel like when it gets to that point, that I'm like, okay, well, I kind of tried, and I've tried to, you know kind of stare them the right way and it's still not working i feel like that's when i i know how to draw the line i'm like okay you know what i'm sorry i can't help you but i give them like a solution gotcha. either i can connect you with somebody that can or x y and z that's i, I think that's perfect right because mm-hmm. you're not just saying no good luck you're just right you know you're pointing them to right where they can find that yeah solution which we have a similar rule like we don't tell mm-hmm. someone that they're just declined for let's say their dti is too high or whatever right. we're like look you as of now, doesn't work, but here are your options. Like, right. Always give people options because right. otherwise it's just they just throw their hands up and give up. And it's it's a terrible feeling. It's a right. terrible feeling for us to do to someone else. And it's mm-hmm. terrible for them because then it's just like, OK, just got to figure it out. It's right. awful. Yeah. So, Zuli, um, tell the people, please, where they can find and reach you. Yes. Well, you can always call me. I am at the Compass Garsdale office. And I look forward to working with everybody. And thank you so much for having well, me here. Tyler, we'll, we'll put your number or your IG on the on the screen for everyone. Okay. So awesome. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.